So what I was machining there, um, before I had to stop, is a fixture. I want to sort of start making sort of more better spinners and truthfully that's in the feedback I've received because you know I've been making, well I've been making, I made this spinner recently, um, it's so chunky I can't get it out of my pocket. So this one here, which you have seen. And so many people asked for like the older ones I was making which were thinner, more pocket friendly and kind of generally looked cooler. Um, I would agree with everyone commenting that. So what I want to do is make this fixture where I can sort of just, you know, make one spinner and then, you know, quickly and easily make another one because it takes a while to like, each time you make a new spinner to sort of set it up in the vise, touch probe it to make sure it's centered and, you know, do the height adjustment and all that stuff. So by spending time, sort of investing time in this fixture, then, you know, I've got something that will sort of down the line, keep, you know, keep paying for itself in me not wasting my time. I stopped just now because I, yet again, write another um, cutter another cutting tool. I don't know how I'm doing it, maybe maybe I'm just pushing it too too fast into, into the titanium, I don't know, so I'm gonna slow it down by like 50%, see if that helps. So I just need to put another cutter in and keep going. So that is the fixture for putting spinners on, almost done. I will take it out now. Now the great thing, and I don't know if you'll appreciate how great it is, the reason I appreciate how great it is, every time I put a workpiece in there, I've got to put the touch probe in, find the X center, find the Y center, and you know, it's such a pain having to do that all the time. But with this now, you know, I can, I can like take this out, like so, covered in coolant. Oh, it's covered in chips as well, to get rid of that. So I can take this out, I can put it back in exactly how it was. So I can put it in the vise, butt it up sort of on the left hand side, and it's exactly sort of centered on the X and on the Y just as it was before I took it out. And it's so good because this is where I'm clamping underneath and on the top I've got this little island. So what I still need to do is drill and tap so I can put the spinner on and then screw like a, a five millimeter uh, bolt on and that will hold it. And because it's held in the center, I can then just mill, mill around it, bevel it, that kind of thing. I can do the same on the other side. The only downside is when I cut a spinner on the water jet cutter over there, I then have to take the spinner it's still have to clamp it in the vise, still have to touch probe it, um, just to find the center, and then I have to sort of mill a little square, like the female version of this, this is like the male version, so I've got to cut the female version of that, and it's got to be sort of precise to fit on top with no sort of, um, with no play in it. But I think it should work pretty well. It will allow me to sort of produce a spinner quicker and again just so you know this is just for prototyping just for messing about just for my own interest learning the machine 
I doubt I'll be selling spinners from here. Um, considering it, still thinking about it, but right now, probably not. As you can see, I have just drilled the hole in here. We have a tap to make the thread. Unfortunately, we don't have like the tap holder to, to thread it. And I've never threaded anything in this before. Um, after spending all day making this fixture, I don't want to experiment on this. I don't want to ruin this fixture by, you know, threading it incorrectly, snapping the tap and it getting stuck in there or whatever. So we're gonna do it by hand tonight when I get home to the old workshop. Just now, um, I have, and actually, before I do that, let's answer some questions from comments. Hey Magnus, what is the best way for me to speak with you about a custom request? I do understand that the products are fairly expensive, but I love titanium and especially the grade that you use. Please let me know. Unfortunately, I, I definitely can't do any custom stuff just now. I am learning the machine. Uh, you know, I've got other projects that I'm doing. I just don't do one-offs. You know, maybe in the future you never know, but it's, it's really, it's really unlikely. Can you make a titanium dice? That would be awesome. That is one thing I would like to do. Um, just doing some spinners first, then I will almost certainly make a titanium dice. But hopefully it goes better than the titanium domino that failed spectacularly um, a few days ago. Are you going to finish the jet-powered skateboard? Yes, I will at some point, um, but most likely... <sighs> Damn air compressor. Every time. I don't think a day goes by where I don't have to stop filming or get interrupted without the air compressor coming on. Anyway, uh, I will finish the jet-powered skateboard, but it certainly won't be in the next month or two, that's for sure. Now this isn't a question, it's a comment by Zach Fox, but it's really, really good. Thank you for the thoughts on pricing. I am a custom cabinet slash furniture maker and started my own business three years ago. That's about the time I started my business. Recently I was chatting with a fellow entrepreneur about fair pricing. His advice was, the prices have to be fair to you first, not your client. Thanks for the great videos. That is great. That is, I do like that. One more comment, um, not a question. Um, I'll just read part of this comment, but it's very, very good. Um, Zippo Varga, your name rings a bell. I'm just thinking, I think you uh, write a lot of good comments, actually, um, if my memory serves me right. Anyway, Zippo Varga says, Mont Blanc won't make a $20 pen, just as Papermate won't make a $300 pen. And that one sentence perfectly sums up um, my positioning um, on spinners. You know, like, there's companies that sell $20 plastic spinners that will never make a $200 titanium spinner. And I'm at the opposite end, kind of like Mont Blanc. You know, I'll make a one $200 spinner, whatever it's gonna be when I eventually launch them, but I'll never make a $20 plastic spinner. So that, that pretty much would clear up 90% of the comments on price and quality and, and that kind of thing. Now, what I will show you here is this. So that is the spinner blank. I am just about to cut on the water jet cutter. So here we have a chunky, a very chunky spinner blank. Now this is 11.5 uh, millimeters thick. So what I'm gonna try and do now is clamp it in the vise on the milling machine and mill out the pocket. Now the pocket will need like a little bit of tweaking. I'll need to mill it and then maybe skim it again, skim it again, like, and keep trying the, the fixture on it because, you know, if it's too loose, I have to throw this away because any play at all, and you know, the milling isn't gonna work. It's gonna be absolutely um, tight, tight as it can be, really. So 
So you probably saw on the fixture there, um, fixtures and device, spinner, pocket milled out, um, I was increasing the pocket size, you know, wouldn't fit on, wouldn't fit on, wouldn't fit on, and then too loose. You saw that on there, it was like tick, 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 tick. so it's too loose. So this here, ah, can't get it off now. <laughs> it's, so this here is a write-off. I have to, have to bin that basically. Don't have time today. I will have to call it a day at that. I don't think I'll be milling tomorrow. I uh, got quite a lot on. And so Thursday most likely is when we'll start milling the spinner. I will leave you with a quote, however. It is by Benjamin Franklin, and he said, if passion drives you, let reason hold the reins.